Spider-Man's a pretty revolutionary character. Well, not necessarily Spider-Man, but Peter Parker, the man, I mean teenager behind the mask. You see, Peter Parker doesn't necessarily embody the traits of a typical hero from the onset of his superpowered career. And that's why the powers that were at Marvel almost didn't improve Stan Lee and Steve Ditko's story about a character modeled after a repulsive creepy crawling. And at the same time, the Amazing Fantasy title was coming to an end. So, in one of the best things to come out of a discontinuation of a comic title, Spider-Man's story was slipped in at the end of issue 15, The Last Amazing Fantasy. The popularity of that story alone led to the career of one of the best superheroes in comicdom, and that's why I have here Marvel Masterworks The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1. And that whole story I just told is recounted by Stanley himself in an interesting introduction. But of course, with more humor, detail, and charm. Anyways, this book collects the aforementioned Amazing Fantasy number 15 and Amazing Spider Man number 1 through 10, written, of course, by Stan Lee and drawn by Steve Didko. Now, one of the most interesting things about seeing these issues collected together is to see the success rate, as it were, of the villains. Issues 1 through 10 introduce characters like the Chameleon, the Vulture, Sandman, Doctor Octopus, and Electro, all of which become major players in the Spider Man Rogues Gallery. Now, I say this because of my experience with early issues of superheroes prior to and at this time. The villains are usually pretty minor and fall into obscurity. This just speaks to the apparent popularity of Spider-Man at the time, which of course has translated well to today. But what can be said that popularity stems from? Well, I would like to think it's the character of Peter Parker. The relatable young nerd's difficulty in sustaining his secret identity and struggling through economic hardships are aspects to a superhero character that hadn't seen a lot of prominence in earlier days. The interesting dynamic of the notorious J. Jonah Jameson besmirching Spider-Man's name also contributed to the vigilantism prominent in later characters and titles. So Stanley has always been known as the creator of these popular heroes, but his attempt to shift comic writing while also keeping it in the realm of the time is just as important. And while dialogue is still cheesy as ever, a product of the time, the plotting and even the character development, especially of Peter Parker's shift to more altruistic motives, really put this book in a higher echelon of classic comics. Everyone should read this. It really gives a look at the time and Stan Lee's writing, like a Central Hulk Volume 1. But the ever popular Spider Man is a lot harder to beat. And like a Central Hulk Volume 1, after reading Marvel Masterworks The Amazing Spider Man Volume 1, I felt like I had a better understanding of Stanley's talents and his innovations. I also understood how much better the art looks with color. They may be pricier and shorter than the essential books, but the Masterworks books certainly look better. <laughs>